The Energy Charter Treaty is a multilateral agreement that was uh, adopted in 19, uh, late 90s, 1998, for most of the EU countries. And the aim of the treaty is to protect foreign investment in the energy supply. Uh, and the protection is done through by giving the foreign investors the possibility uh, to sue governments uh, in private arbitrations and to claim a billion, up to billion of euros uh, in case you change anything in your law. It's definitely a threat to the ecological transition and beyond the ecological trans transition, it's a threat for the climate justice. Uh, because we have cases, for example, in, uh, uh, in uh, Eastern European countries where uh, investors uh, have sued uh, governments uh, there uh, because they made changes in the law uh, as part of uh, alleviating energy poverty, for example. So uh, if, you, if you make any change that... Uh, the basic rule is that you are government, you are party of uh, to this treaty, you make any changes in your uh, in your law. Uh, if foreign investors uh, based in your government in your country can sue you, it does not matter uh, what uh, what is the reason behind your changes because investors do not take into account that you need to make changes for environmental reason or for social reason. Yeah, we already have the case. Uh, we already have the case, for example, in France, uh, when the uh, the government uh, in 2017 tried uh, what we call the famous uh, Nicolas Law, uh, Nicolas Hulot law, uh, to uh, stop uh, to end uh, exploration of uh, fossil fuel exploration, and the Canadian company Vermillon uh, um, sent a letter. Uh, through the lawyer, of course, to the French government, reminding the French government uh, that uh, there, uh, the obligation of the French government based on the Energy Charter Treaty because this company has several licenses to explore uh, in France uh, fossil fuels. And based on this, it seems that the government changed, uh, watered down the law. Uh, the Things like that, uh, that did happen, maybe in the past it was not happening that much, uh, in the future, it would happen more and more because made, putting in place or uh, uh, the climate uh, climate neutrality target requires changing our laws everywhere in the world, and especially in Europe, because we are we are leading in climate neutrality for the time being. So what is going to happen is that we will need to stop anyway uh, the use of fossil fuels, the exploration, the production, etc. And uh, what it means, it means that because we are parties to this treaty, uh, we will be sued, our government will be sued. When I say we, it's because it's the taxpayers who pay. It's billion of euros paid, it's billion of euros paid by the taxpayers' money. This, this is why it's really bad. No, uh, I think those who say this, they do not understand how the treaty functions. They don't understand the governance of the treaty. To make, in theory, you can amend the treaty and you uh, exclude to exclude all fossil fuels because making the treaty Paris compatible means you exclude all fossil fuels, all of them right now. Achieving this is not possible because to do that, you need unanimity vote. And uh, unanimity vote means that all the 53 uh, parties to the treaty will vote yes for excluding fossil fuels. We have in this uh, treaty some parties who are uh, making income out of fossil fuels. So these countries, some countries, it's up to 15% of their GDP that comes from uh, fossil fuels revenues. So why a country would vote something against its own revenues? And especially given, take into account that these countries are developing countries. They are not rich countries. I think until 2018, they did not realize that we were party, what, what being party to this treaty means for climate uh, neutrality target. Now they know. Uh, and now they are uh, locked in their own contradictions. Uh, the only way forward is what the French government did, is to, uh, to really be clear about the, the fact that modernizing the treaty, making this treaty Paris compatible means no fossil fuel anymore protected right now, and we end the protection of the previous fossil fuels, what was protected before the modernization. Uh, but this is not what the Commission did come up with, and we don't yet have the EU proposal. The deadline to submit the EU proposal is February 15, so we look forward to that, and I hope they will not contradict themselves. 
I'm not the enemy of the organization. That's the first thing. So, uh, and I'm not the enemy of anything. I just, uh, I think I'm just consistent with what I do. I understand very well what, uh, what the, what are the implications of the Paris Agreement for the fossil fuel industry. Their time is over. It just, it's an over era, and uh, you cannot at the same time uh, be. Uh, one of the IPCC authors, you cannot at the same time understand the implication of the Paris Agreement for the uh, fossil fuel industry and work on protecting fossil fuels. It just, well, my brain cannot capture the two. I don't know if there are brains who can, but mine cannot. Th there is no protection uh, if uh, there is no protection because when you, the you question. Your question about uh, uh, is the European Union hypocrite, etc. So basically, when uh, you show to people that, hey, look, guys, you cannot at the same time talk about climate neutrality and be in the treaty. This, these are just facts. Showing some facts, uh, people do not like the, the truth. Some people do not like the truth. France built a coalition with other EU countries to work on the withdrawal because this is the only option forward.